Hey guys, it's Rita Black and I am happy to be here speaking with you and I'm going to walk you through the three mind hacks to get some exercise consistency. Every year without fail, I crack myself up in February because in January, those classes are so full at the gym. I can't even move. I remember this January, I went the first week and I couldn't even get weights in my high intensity interval training class. Can you believe it? Well, you probably can because it probably happened to you too if you went to the gym. But here's the thing. Um, you know, it, for most people, by the time they get around to February, those exercise resolutions have kind of faded and the gym, I get my weights back, I get more room to move around in. And, but I think about those poor people at home probably feeling bad because they want to be at the gym, but they just can't get themselves there. They, you know, want to feel fit and healthy, but they can't really... Um, you know, it just doesn't happen. And why does that happen? So if you've been struggling with, you know, getting into an exercise mode and then falling out of it and then getting into an exercise mode and falling out of it or not even just being able to get into an exercise mode at all, I want to walk you through three mind techniques that you can use to help you get more consistency and just help you get to the gym or get you, not, forget the gym, just help you get your move in your body and exercising more because exercise, you know, I, I don't have to tell you what great stuff goes on when you exercise in your body, but not only are you burning calories, but you're uh, leveling up your dopamine and in and, and your brain and your serotonin and your endorphins and you're feeling awesome, but you're also feeling good about yourself. You get out of that gym, you know, you never regret exercising or you finish that walk, you get home feeling refreshed and the clean air in your lungs. You, you'd never regret that. So um, if, if I can convey one thing to you this year that, you know, like, and you can get out there and, and be consistent with exercise, well, yay, then that would be super awesome. So let's get started. So here's, here's an interesting little thing. And, and this can, if you want to get yourself to do anything, this is pretty much what you need to do. Um, you need to market to your brain. See, your brain is like a child and it, it and especially your subconscious mind. It's like a little two year old, right? And if it, and a lot of times when we approach um, exercise, uh, we are uh, we're thinking about exercise like the big bad monster, right? It's that thing you got to do, and it's really horrible and awful, and you're gonna put on the exercise clothes, and you're gonna sweat, and it's gonna be boring and it's horrible. horrible. And, and by the time you know, like your poor mind's like thinking about it and it's quivering, and it's like, I don't want to do that. That sounds really horrible and awful, and we shut down, and then we don't exercise, right? You know, and especially in these cold winter mornings when it seems really cold out there, you know, getting up to go for that walk or going to the gym when it's raining outside. It seems, you know, it, if you're looking at it from before, see like there's before exercise, during and after. After exercise, we never regret exercise, right? So the, so that is really where we want to focus our mind on how we're going to feel after our exercise session, not um, the trip to the gym, not putting on our clothes, not when we're on the treadmill or the walk or whatever, unless, you know, like the walk, once you're walking, once you're on the treadmill, like you, again, you, you feel pretty good once you're exercising. But when we're sitting there thinking about being on the treadmill or thinking about walking and it's cold outside or thinking about going to the gym and it's dark and it's cold outside, that is not the most great marketing, right? Like if there was a commercial going on and it was showed this woman like, you know, putting her clothes on and going in the dark to the gym, probably wouldn't be getting many gym memberships um, on that one. But if it showed the woman leaving the gym and and wiping the sweat from her brow and drinking from her bottle and feeling all, you know, she has that little misty mist of uh, sweat that makes her look really, you know, healthy and glowing and the glows on her face and her muscles, you can just see from the face, like she feels awesome. Well, that is a little better marketing, wouldn't you say? So when I want to go to the gym, I market how I'm going to feel leaving the gym all the time because there will be a part of me that will be like that little child going like, I don't want to go to the gym, but if I'm like, but come on, honey, you know, when you leave that exercise, you need that exercise class, you know how good you feel in your body and you know, you're going to feel good 
sleeping tonight and when you wake up in the morning, you'll be proud of yourself. That gets my higher level dopamine brain, the reward brain going, ooh, yeah, that sounds good. And it's pulling me forward into the exercise. Another thing about marketing is branding yourself as an exerciser. Yeah, because a lot of times when we're like, oh, I don't really like exercise, I'm a couch potato, that's a brand. And when we see our identity is everything. So when we see ourselves as a couch potato trying to exercise, well, guess how that's going to fly in your mind? Not very well. So I invite you to also rebrand yourself as a person who likes exercise or an exerciser. And you don't have to model yourself after those crazy people at the gym that look like they're there all day long and, you know, they're kind of weird. Um, you don't have to model yourself. So you model yourself on somebody you like and, and model yourself on, you know, people who just, you know, go outside and walk and just love, you know, interacting, moving their bodies and being healthy with exercise. All right. That's step number one, market exercise to yourself. Two, plan, replan, have a plan B. Okay, so another thing that people tend to do is they'll have a plan for exercise. I'm gonna go four days a week, I'm gonna walk on Monday, I'm gonna go to spin on Tuesday, I'm gonna do this. But when it doesn't happen on Monday, then the rest of the week is like, ah, I blew it this week, I'll just start again next week, right? You know, I'll take my clothes to the work and then I'll go home. I'll go to the gym after work and Monday they don't do it. So the rest of the week, the gym clothes stay in the bag in the back of the car, right? So what you want to do is you really do want to plan your exercise out. You know, then other people are like, well, I hope I'm going to try to get to the gym. Well, we all know where that's going. Try is a fast boat to nowhere, right? Uh, it just ain't going to happen. Sorry. It ain't. So um, what you want to do, you know, I have my little planner and, you know, I have my crazy schedule, but I have, you know, I sit down every Sunday and I plan where I'm going to spend in my week. And it's like an appointment. It's one of the most important appointments my week. I keep that, that appointment. Now, if I can't do it for whatever reason, something happens, something happens with the kids and I got to go pick up the kids when I didn't expect to or... Um, you know, I have to go to a meeting or a client needs me, something that just interrupts my exercise plan, I will have a plan B. And, and my clients, I urge them, I say, always have an exercise plan B. Now, plan B should be a super easy, like, let's say, you know, the other day I went to my gym, there was a water break, uh, a, a water leak in the gym. The gym was closed. So I came home and I went for a walk instead, a walk jog. I still exercise. So that was plan B. That's something that I didn't need the gym. I didn't need special equipment. Walking is something you can always do. Or dancing around to crazy music. Like I have a, I have a dan um, you know, little playlist. Thank you. A playlist that I just listen to and I will dance around my house, you know, and go crazy. Sometimes I won't do it as long as I would have if I had gone spinning or gone to an exercise class. But I will do it because... It makes me feel good. It gets my body moving. And what I'm also doing in my mind is I am sticking to what I said I would do. So it's self-integrity. And self-integrity, when we see ourselves doing what we say we're going to do, it builds confidence. And it also becomes a bridge from one exercise session to the other because that break, you know, oh, it didn't happen. I didn't exercise this week can often lead to not exercising for two weeks and then three weeks and then we're out of our exercise habit. So no matter what, if you plan to exercise, do it. Even if it's walking for 10 minutes, call it exercise, but have that be your bridge over to your next exercise session so you remain consistent. Okay, last one. Shift resistance to seduction. So this is kind of going back to marketing exercise to yourself, but you know, there is a very seductive part of your brain, what I like to call your inner rebel. And your inner rebel is very good at talking you out of stuff. You know, your inner rebel knows you so well. And so again, this goes back to trying. There's a psychological state called decisional anxiety. It's really when we're like, haven't really decided that we're gonna do something and really made that commitment to ourselves, but that we're just like, oh, I'm gonna try to go to the gym this week, right? So our inner rebel will take that trying and it will say, well, you know, you're, you're having that little ache and maybe it's probably better that you don't exercise this week. Oh, you know, you don't have your, that exercise 
outfit really doesn't look that good. You know, you, you can't go to the gym looking like that. Oh, you know, you could go, but we've got that television show. And if we, you know, don't see it then, it's never going to happen, you know, or we're really hungry and we like whatever. It's always going to be something that's going to keep you from going and exercising. So one, you got to really commit and make that decision. But this is, this is turning the resistance into seduction. This is something that you can do and it's called pre-practicing. So as with any sort of seducer in your life, you know, somebody who's really good at conning you into stuff in the moment, if they catch you off guard, they've got you, they've got you so good, you know, nothing else is going to happen. You're going to do what they say, right? But if you practice, if you know ahead of time, it's like, oh, they're going to say this to me. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say that. So um, I'll give you an example for myself with exercise. So if there's a, I know, like, you know, I work hard all day long. And I, I, a lot of times work out at night. So I know there's a part of my mind that's going to go, well, you worked so hard today. It was such a long day. It's dark outside. You know, you, you worked out yesterday. Why don't you just, you know, take tonight off, right? There's a part of me that that line is just a recording. You hit play. It plays all the way through. So I practice meeting that voice with another voice, which is like, oh, I could take the night off. But you know what? When I get out of that exercise class, I am going to feel so awesome. You know, I'm going to feel like I've stretched. I'm going to be energized. I won't feel lethargic anymore. Any idea of having worked and how hard I worked, that's going to be a distant memory to how awesome I feel when I leave that exercise class. Again, so what you're doing is meeting that resistant part of you and saying, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, 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 I, I got it. But what about this? What about us leaving the gym and it's like, what of us getting done with that walk and we feel light and awesome and happy? What about that? Hey there. So just to quickly review uh, the three steps, um, what you want to do is really rebrand yourself and see yourself as an exerciser or someone who loves to exercise not as the couch potato or somebody who's struggling with exercise and is going to really try to exercise, but really see yourself from a different identity an exercise or ed- identity and market exercise to yourself. Like it's this fabulous commercial that you can't just wait to, to, uh, to use, you know, like just like put, get your, your reptilian brain, that slow old brain, uh, put a picture in front of it that excites it, that feeling good, like leaving the gym or finishing that walk or that swim or how good you're going to feel that day or feel how, how good you're going to feel after a month of exercising consistently every week. Um, plan your exercise out. And if you don't get to do that specific exercise, do some form of exercise, even if it's just walking, uh, down to, uh, the end of the block and back a couple of times, um, give yourself like a nice five or 10 minute exercise just so that you're continuing that consistency in your mind and your keeping, uh, you know, your self integrity around your exercise. So you don't get that negative feeling about yourself or that disconnect. Keep consistent. Even you have your plan B's ready to go walk, dance around your kitchen. Uh, there's many things you can do that don't need anything other than you and your inspiration to exercise. The last thing is, um, practice those moments when you know you're going to talk yourself out of exercise, practice really good comebacks that are seductive comebacks into exercise. If you're laying in bed in the morning, oh, it's so cold and I don't want to think how good you're going to feel after you get back from that walk. Think how good you're going to feel this afternoon, having exercised this morning, 
in sitting in your chair at work or think how great you're going to feel tonight lying on the couch watching television having already exercised how light and lean you're going to feel in your body so uh talk to yourself at you know practice talking to yourself at those moments um where you know you talk yourself out of it and come up with some really good comebacks i know you can do that all right so i hope that this has been helpful for you i look forward to seeing you at the gym or um on um, in the field, walking or at the beach, running or splashing around in the waves. Uh, you can have an amazing, wonderful relationship with exercise and be consistent with it. And, and if you're interested, just to help you out, I'm giving you a major discount on my hypnosis sessions for exercise. The, the package, it's a, actually, it's a three packet or three part um, hypnosis uh, package. One of them is wake up and exercise. So it's a five minute session to get you up in the morning and moving your body. Um, it talks you out of bed actually. So it's a really great session. There's a 14 minute session that you can listen to and it just gets you excited about exercising. It really just re-engages your brain and like, yeah, I want to exercise. Um, the other session you can listen to actually in your car on the way home. It kind of talks you into coming home and exercising when you're out running errands or coming home from work. So those are three really great sessions that are going to hit different parts of your exercise uh, profile. Um, waking up in the morning, coming home and exercising, and just like really getting you super engaged to exercise. I'm giving you a massive discount. Go check it out below. It's a bargain. Enjoy. Um, and enjoy these three mind hacks. Um, and I will see you soon. Uh, have a great day.